Now for cirrhosis, the big liver lecture. So the pathophysiology is simple. In liver cirrhosis, just think scarrosis for cirrhosis. Normal healthy tissue gets replaced with scar tissue, making the liver hard like a rock. Now, what causes this? Well, think about it here. Anything that can scar the liver in scarrosis. So alcohol abuse can scar the liver. Chronic hepatitis with inflammation can scar the liver. And even cystic fibrosis, where we get serious mucus in cystic fibrosis. This mucus can build up and clog the entire body, including the liver. Now, what does the liver do? As you know from our liver song, the liver acts like a recycling company with four major roles and responsibilities. Detoxing ammonia, a waste product of protein, drug metabolism, storing glycogen, producing bile coag factors, and albumin. <laughs> so coag factors are our clotting factors to prevent bleeding. And albumin is used for drug transportation as well as to attract water into the vascular spaces. Now, I know that's a lot, so let's break this down one by one. Simply think the liver produces ABC. A for albumin, B for bile, and C for clotting factors. So starting with albumin. Albumin is a protein inside the blood that does three things. It transports drugs inside the body. It also attracts water to keep it inside the vascular space and also binds with calcium to make bones strong. So just think... Albumin attracts water as well as attracts drugs and binds with calcium. Now, another memory trick that I personally use during nursing school is to think of albumin as Al Pacino from that movie Scarface for scarrosis. Now, Scarface is an old movie from the 80s about a drug lord who transports drugs and he's near Miami, basically near the water, to help you remind me of water. So just think here, when the liver fails in scarrosis, the body can't produce albumin. So we get hypoalbuminemia. So drugs don't get transported properly and water builds up inside the body because albumin isn't there to attract the water. And this causes edema and third spacing like ascites where the abdomen is filled with fluid. So just think of the double A's. Ascites is for abdominal fluid. And lastly, hypoalbuminemia, we see low calcium inside the blood due to low binding. So we see weak bones with a big risk for fractures and even osteoporosis, those porous bones. And lastly, the two classic signs of hypocalcemia, or basically low calcium, is trousseaux. We have an arm twerk with a blood pressure cuff on, and also chivostics, which is a smile when you stroke the side of the cheek. The next thing is B for bile, which we call the bile bus, helping to scoop up excess cholesterol and bilirubin, taking it from the body and into the potty via the bowels. Now, cholesterol, as you know, are those lipids that clog the arteries if we have too much, leading to major cardiac issues. And bilirubin is just those dead RBCs, or basically red blood cells. So when the liver fails, then we get a buildup of both, high cholesterol, and high bilirubin, which bilirubin turns the body jaundice, making the entire body yellow. So we get yellow skin, yellow eyes, specifically the white part of the eye called the sclera. So Kaplan mentions cirrhosis, expected laboratory results, is elevated bilirubin. And this is due to the lack of bile, or the bile bus, to help carry this bilirubin out of the body and into the potty. The last letter in our ABCs is C for clotting factors, or coagulation factors, which helps the blood to clot. So with liver disease, the blood doesn't clot fast enough, leading to huge bleed risks. Always our number one concern is bleeding. So naturally, we see longer clotting times, resulting in longer coagulation times on the coagulation panel when we look at lab results. So Hesse mentions, which complication is a patient with cirrhosis at risk for? And the answer is bleeding. And another question, which hematological symptoms might be noted in a patient with cirrhosis of the liver? Select all that apply here. Anemia, low blood volume, leukopenia, low white blood cells, and a big one here, thrombocytopenia, 
low platelets under 150,000. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves here, just focus on the thrombocytopenia here. We'll talk about anemia and leukopenia when we start talking about portal hypertension. Okay, now the second role of the liver is to detoxify ammonia, which is a byproduct of protein metabolism. So just think of ammonia as a protein wrapper. It's trash. The body will absorb the protein and trash the waste, the ammonia. So the liver converts ammonia into urea, pushing it into the blood as urea, coming out as blood urea nitrogen when we measure BUN. And then it's excreted by the kidneys as urine. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.